And then you'll have to go back down with something at an angle. This claw works fine. And dig out the rest. And you can actually, I guess this, this makes our entire segment meaningless. You can actually take this whole wooden frame with the cane out and buy a new one for probably the same money as you would pay a person to recane yeah, this Yeah, but if chair. you do it yourself, which is what we're teaching, then you'll save yourself some money and you'll learn something new and then you can do it for your family and your friends and nobody will leave you alone. <laughs> Everybody will want you to do it and then you'll go into business and then you'll go bankrupt. Pretty much sold them on the idea of but doing it themselves. This is important right here in this corner. See, now I got this one edge out. Now I gotta go this way, but I don't wanna shoot like this because no. if I bang under there and pull down, I'm gonna bend this. I'm gonna make a big ding in there. So I gotta keep banging like here and hope that I can lift that up and it comes up. All right, I'll take a chisel in here. There, see? Now I can get the chisel underneath, the all underneath and continue to bang, bang. And I forgot how much I like doing this. You hate doing this. I was acting there. Was that acting? Was that? The channels are all clean. Now it's time to apply oh, cane and reed. Why do you talk like that all the time? Now apply. it's time to apply. Well, I'm trying to appeal to all demographics. Okay. All right, now we're going to get busy with now all Now it's time to get to work, all right? This is real shop talk here. I just spit just came out of my mouth. Okay. Now we've, we've uh, cut a generous amount of cane that we've had soaking overnight. It's sitting right here. You can see it's nice and... Uh, Wet. Nice and wet. And underneath, we got the reed. What's this? It's wood. It's a thin piece of wood, pine, that we are going to cut up into wedges. Into little wedges like this. Into little wedges so we can, when we apply the cane to the channel, we can bang the cane down into the channel. This is smaller than the, uh, the, than the channel. Well, if it was bigger than the channel, how would it fit then in the channel? Then it wouldn't fit in. Once you get it broken, you sand I trick them. to smooth it. The, the, the wide edges and the ends, so that they're rounded over. Because you don't want them cutting into the, uh, into the reed. Right, not a chiseled end, but a rounded edge. Now the whole idea, once you get on this, once you get the seat here, uh, get up to the seat, you want to put lay the cane on here, and then you'll put a wedge in here, and a wedge here, and a wedge here, and one here. So the, what, the idea is to pull it tight. Uh, you'll probably need three, 12, I Four, think. five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. about 12. Like I said, 12. But before you do any of that, you've got to remember this channel's got to be really clean and you got to put some glue in there. Otherwise, <laughs> it's not going to stick. Regular white glue. Or no. you can use yellow carpenter's glue. But I want to take the glue, smush the glue all around in there. You want to make sure the glue is all over the channel, the bottom and the sides of the channel. Now, I'm going to take the cane, and you got to make sure it's straight. You don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. You got to make sure that you got enough on all sides, because when you start, you can't, you can't go back. You have to use a new piece of cane. And it gets kind of hairy. Hairy cane. Harry, he was with the, in a Hitchcock film, wasn't no, he? No, he had a dog act. No, that was Harry Carey. He had a dog act. Number one wedge. We're going to put... <laughs> Number one wedge. Well, I want to put it right back here. I'll start in the back. Put one in the middle of the back. Right? You always start in the middle. See, that's wedges in there now. Now I'm going to pull this a little bit, and I'm going to stick a wedge right in the front. Tamp gently. See, I got the cane in here, but I can't start laying the reed until the channel is clearly evident. So I have to start. The channel is clearly evident. Right. I have to go around, and I got to make a mark all the way around. 
And as I do that... Did you tell them you want to check for tension after you, uh... This whole bit has tension. I hope... Now I'm going to continue all the way around until I get this line your, and your, your uh, cane starts popping up in the air like this. And then we'll apply more glue onto that channel and then bang the reed in with this tamper. Now you must be careful when you're tamping because if you break one of these reeds, you got to start again otherwise because it's all going to unwind. That's why you have to let it soak overnight. Like our careers. I'm going to put some glue on this. So I'm going to start in the back here. This is where you bang it home. Ready? Yes! You are right, sir. You are right, sir. Ha, ha, ha. Now you can see how that is started in there. And now you're just going to take it around all the way around. to probably, well, I'll take it around to the end here. Somewhere near Jersey. Yeah. It's because you can't bend it at the corners here. So I'm going to have to stop right down there, make a cut, and then run a piece here, make a cut, and then lay a piece in straight. Careful with the cutting. Not on the wood, I mean with your hands. You can always touch up wood. Um, one thing we found out while doing this, rather than putting... It's hot in here. Yeah, but especially if you're going to go slowly, and you should go slowly, if, especially if it's your first time, don't put the glue all the way around and then do the reed because the glue that you finish up with is going to be too dry. So just do one length, one side of a chair with the glue, tamp the reed down, and then do glue on the next, on the next side. Now once you get this all trimmed, tamp it down, final time, and the final step is sitting. No, you gotta let this dry overnight. You don't try and sit on it right away. No? Good. Okay. Now the final step is to take a rag with some water and wipe. Can I have that rag? As soon as I'm done. You wanna wipe the whole seat. That makes it nice and wet. Right, right. And when you come back to it the next day, it'll be nice and taut. It'll tighten up. It'll, it'll be dry. It'll contract. And it'll be real tight like this. Joe's out getting the strawberries because he's been reading the cane mutiny all morning. And I'm going to show you how to do a very simple cane or rattan, in this case, trick. A lot of times people have uh, porch furniture, rattan furniture. It starts to unravel at the end, especially where two legs come together. And uh, you don't want that wobbly. You want to just repair the end of the rattan. So what I do is I clip off the ends. You always want to repair, repair it, trim it off, so you repair the inside so people don't see the repair. And you unravel it, one more wind around, get a little bit of glue, put the glue on there. You don't need much. And then you wrap it underneath. Get it nice and tight. And then you get a brad 
These are small brass brads, very small little nail type situations. I like to use a needle nose pliers when applying this. Get the hammer and right where that end overlaps or underlaps in this case, And a brass brad is good because you really, you really can't see it. Now this rattan is tight, and we can do 11 other repairs to hey, this chair. Hey, what are you doing? I'm repairing the rattan to this chair, my Don't friend. repair this chair. This what? chair is mine. This chair is character. Yeah, but this chair is. But it was character, and you were falling out of it. No, I put a pillow here. Yeah, this a nice is, pillow. This is my chair. Don't repair this chair. You can't mute me. You're looking at a French deco bar made of a very unusual wood called palm wood. Well, I think Gauguin had a lot of pieces made out of this stuff. You know, French art deco differs from American deco because it uses more exotic wood veneers. Well, they worked with more exotic cuts, we should say, uh, than, than intricate carvings. Like this Elmore, for example. Did you ever hear of this wood? It's an African-Asian veneer called Burl and Boina. Yeah, he later changed his name to Ives. <laughs> no, it, but it would be hard to make a piece out of this if you had to do a repair because you can only find small pieces of it, and when you do locate it, it's very expensive. The French, they always want special, special right. with them. So you'll notice on this server, for instance, the cabinet maker carefully matched the veneers on each door, and just by coincidence, today, we're gonna be showing how to do repairs on veneer. <laughs> And here we have a selection of veneers. A bunch of them. Now, remember, veneer, veneered furniture doesn't denote a cheap piece of furniture. Not necessarily, no. Beautiful wood can be beautiful on top of a piece of furniture, but not strong enough to be made into a solid piece of furniture. So what you do is you take a, they take an underlayment, which is a plywood structure or cheaper wood, build the piece, and then adhere the veneer with either, in the old days, they used the high glue, which is from an animal resin. Mm. And today, they use veneer glues, regular chemical veneer glues. And remember, but it doesn't veneer, mean it's cheap. veneer is nothing more or less than wood sliced very, very thin and then applied to other wood. That's right. And here we have a selection of beautiful veneers. Yeah, let's say you wanted to make a piece out of walnut. You went and you bought all the walnut. You first, you got to have the machinery. You got to have a joiner. You got to have a planer. You get the boards rough. It costs you a little cheaper. If you get the, the wood surface at the mill house, the Richard Mill House, then you have to, uh, you got to pay extra for that. So you got to buy all this wood, make the cabinet, and it costs a lot. If you buy veneer, it's cheaper. But still yeah. could be nice. Still could be nice. Here's walnut. Now this is called, this is a plain cut of walnut. Mm -hmm. Plain sawn. Plain sawn. Plain sawn. And this is a rift cut of walnut. A rift cut. Now, there's a difference in cutting. There's three or more basic cuts of wood. Yeah. Shall we talk about well, that? Well, let's say this is a tree. This is just a block of oak. Mm -hmm. Now, if this was a tree, one half, and you had your other half over here, and it gets struck by lightning, or you take a big chisel, or a big saw, or a, little, or a very strong knife. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> and you cut it, and it falls. It is felled. Norman fell. <laughs> like that. OK, the, the, the veneer that is cut off of this that would be plain portion sawn. like that is plain sawn. Now, from the edge over here, cut it like that. That is a rift cut. How many people this understood that? Plain, rift, rift. and peanut. No. <laughs> no, this is, what's this? this that's, is, that's a rift. That of? That's oak. 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 This is an oak rift cut. Right. And this is ash. ash. Ash, and if you curl this really tight and use a lot of glue, you can make a baseball bat. No, that's out of not it. how they make a baseball bat. No, baseball bat is made out of a block of of ash turned on a lathe. Get out of here. L a t h e lathe. And Love here, that word. Here we have mahogany. Mahogany. This is Honduras mahogany. This Political is, strife, yet they still get the wood out. This is Amazon mahogany. It's Big a lot, strong woman. It's mahogany. a lot. Uh, it's a lot more expensive. And, and it's thick, I mean, it's real wood, it's real estate. It's usually made for fine furniture, bar tops, and whatnot. A lovely selection. Now, don't get fooled. Here we have something that fools some people. Is that veneer? That, that boy, that looks like veneer. No, it does not it, even. Wait, 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 wait. 
Tastes like veneer. Doesn't smell like <laughs> veneer. No, it's, a, it's actually a picture of wood. And uh, it's applied to a real cheap piece of wood or no wood at all, in this case, flake board. And various pictures of wood can be found on real cheap pieces of furniture or it can be painted on any kind of plastic. Now here we have... A checkerboard. Or chessboard, as you prefer. Or chessboard. That's been assembled from various different kinds of woods. Well, two, three kinds, actually. But look three at, is various. Look at this. It's been all taped together. Oh, I'd like to see the guy who does this all day. He sits there saying, Ugh. How many rolls of tape does he go through? What do we have here? The white is This birch. is birch. The black is birch also that's been dyed. Your inlay here is mahogany. Mahogany. And these pieces are mahogany that have been dyed black. So you can take this, you can put a veneer glue on the back, a veneer glue on your table surface or just a piece of wood. A little square table. Attach this, roll it down, finish it, and then you can put your chess pieces or your checker pieces. Take it out to the park, that's have right. a little glass of wine. Right. Here's something made out of something called burl. Burl, which is a big, infectious, knobby burl. It's a, it's a, it's a, burl? It's a goiter. Knobby burl, President of Lebanon, uh -huh. I believe. You're, you're full of baloney. <laughs> anyway, it's a big, it's a big goiter. They used to terrify me when I was a kid. Burl it's, scared me too. Every Tuesday night, I'd hide under the bed. The, oh, you're that old? He's wearing a dress, Are Mom. You? He's wearing a dress. We're the men from Texaco. This is book matched. What does that mean? That means that it's been taken from the same slice and two of them have been laid together. See? So and, you got like a Rorschach. Well, you got kind of like a Pope. Looks like a Pope in there. No, I, I see it, I see wood when I no, see that. No, I see the Pope. I see the mitre right up You're, here. He's allowed to say that. 12 years of uh, Catholic school. You couldn't, you, you couldn't make a solid top or a piece of wood or any kind of furniture out of a burl because a burl has no structural integrity because like, it's a like you. stop. But you can slice it thin so what you're doing is you're spreading the flavor of all that around. Around. But if you took, you take a roast beef. Is this an right? explanation? You take a roast beef. Yeah. Put it on a big meat slicer. Uh huh. And you slice it. Yeah. You throw away the end. Right. All right. And then you start slicing. You get these little thin pieces. So that's that are, no. It's that's like veneer. A, it's the same no. thing. It's a no. thin slice no. of veneer. That's not a valid analogy because well, you could have a thick slice of roast beef, which is like a prime rib. Okay. So a London broil. Yes, yes, Could there's be, your analogy. Like a London broil. We just slice a London broil thin or a prosciutto. Prosciutto is Very. better. Very. That's it this week for oh. Furniture on the Man. We learned all about veneer. Oh. I'm Joe Lohario. If you were listening. And I'm Ed Feldman. Please be nice, be nice to your, your furniture. And your roast beef. See, now I'm going to demonstrate here. See what I'm talking about? When we were talking earlier.